You know the secret that separates the admins from the architects? Let me show you. See this code? It's kind of a mess to follow, and it's hard to figure out how to deploy it, which means no one's really gonna wanna use it. But if you wrote simple yet powerful code that could adapt to different scenarios effortlessly, everyone would wanna use it. So in this episode, join me as we journey down the rabbit hole once again, and I'll show you how to be the architect. Now, the way you can improve your code, making it simpler and flexible and reusable, is through something called parameterization. And you can do this with three key helpers, starting with parameters. These are the user inputs. And when you go through the portal build and you fill all this stuff out, those things become your parameters. And we'll use this AVD bicep file from my last video, which is linked in the video description so you can follow along. Notice that everything here is hard coded for all of these resources, which means this code can only do one thing one way. And if you needed to deploy in a different region or have more hosts, you'd have to edit this file each time, which can lead to a lot of mistakes. So let's start by picking a line near the top and type param, then put a space and location. Now when you hit a space again, IntelliSense will pop up, and these are the different types of parameters that you can use. And since we just want a simple text here, use a string. Now you can see Bicep right away has a problem with your parameter. And if you mouse over it, it says you haven't used this anywhere yet. So if you look through your resources for the location property, just erase what you have there for the value and then press control space on your keyboard to activate IntelliSense. Then you wanna select location from the list and just repeat that for all the other resources. Now, when you do this deployment today, you can build in central US and tomorrow UK South without changing anything. So let's do another one for the resource names. We'll call it prefix and make sure that it's a string. Now, when we do the replacement for this, it's not exactly straightforward because you don't want every resource just called the same word. Usually your naming conventions have the word dash and then the resource type. Now to make this happen, the first thing we need to know is the kind of value that the property requires. So just mouse over the word name here and it shows you that it should be a string. Now, if you just tried to use IntelliSense here and select prefix and then add a dash HP, Bicep's gonna yell at you because that thing doesn't actually exist. And if you just try to put quotes around it, that'll turn that value back into a string and you'd get prefix HP as your host pool and you wouldn't be using your parameter. So the way that we need to do this is to use the single quotes and then use a dollar sign curly brackets. And inside the curly brackets, press control space for IntelliSense and select prefix. Then outside the curly bracket, but inside the quotes, you wanna put the dash HP. Now Bicep will combine that input parameter with the text that you've added to make the full name. And just repeat that for your other resource types, of course, changing the dash HP for whatever kind of resource it is. And if you're gonna to wanna to dive even deeper on this subject, comment below with the word module, and I'll make that video for you. The other ways to use parameters are like when you want to select things from a predefined list of values. You see this here in the portal all the time for things like the uh, OS type or the VM sizes. So let's make a new parameter and we'll call it host OS and it'll be a string. And since we want this to have specific values, we have to add a modifier to this parameter. So on the line above the parameter, type the at symbol and there's all of your modifiers. The one that we want is the allowed. And now we need to know what do we do for that? Well, just mouse over it and it wants an array. And an array is just a list of different valued items. But each of these valued items do need to be a string because the parameter is a string. And remember, we wanna keep things very simple for those who have to deploy this. So let's make our first value Windows 10 and then Windows 11. But now we've made a problem for ourselves. If you go down to the session host VM and you look at the image reference section, it's looking for all that stuff, not Win11. So in order to fix this one, we have to give Bicep more information. And that's where variables can help you. Just like in other languages like PowerShell, 
Variables can have one little piece of data in it, or it can have a whole ton of data inside them. And then you can select the specific info you want. And Bicep does this too. So just copy this section of the code, and we'll need that in a second. Go back up to the top, and then on a new line, type VAR. And let's call it VM image. Then we're going to need the equal sign and the curly brackets so we know what's inside this variable. And we need to enter the parameter name like win11. And that's going to need a colon and then its own curly brackets and then paste the code from the session host. And then repeat this for win10 data. With that done, go back down to your session host to the VM image section, delete the values here, and then we want to use IntelliSense and select the VM image variable. Now our variable did have two values, win10 and win11. So how do we tell it which one we want? Well, the user is going to pick the value when they select that host OS parameter. So we're going to want to use that in this value. So let's add a square bracket and then IntelliSense, select host OS. And finally, we need the specific value. Well, in PowerShell, we would use the dot selection method to pick that data. And we can do that in Bicep too. Just type your period and then use the publisher value. And then just to make it easy on yourself, copy this first section of the code, paste it for the offer and do the dot offer, and then repeat that for the other values just like this. So one more time, just because this is kind of complex, the user will select the host OS parameter of win10 or win11 from the dropdown that they'll get. Then when the VM goes to do the build, it'll come to this section of the code. It'll see that we've referenced a variable and it'll look back at VM image for the parameter that was selected, which would be win10 or win11, and pull in all of those values and enter them here with the dot selection method. So let's do one more for VM sizes. And we'll just keep this real simple for the users again by using small, medium, and large. So start with your parameter and let's make it a string. And optionally, you can add a default value here just by doing equals small. And now add these allowed values just like we did before. Go down and create a new variable called VM size. And in that variable, you need to define what those sizes mean, just like this. Now go down to your VM resource to the hardware profile, and you want to replace this static value with our variable. Now notice here, when we do this, VS Code is going to do something very helpful. Highlight the size value and delete it. And notice, VS Code is suggesting something for you. So if you just press tab, that will auto complete it and we're done. Now let's get to the third helper, which is the loop. Now the code as we have it right now will only build one of each kind of resource. Now most pools might be okay with just having one pool and one app group, but you're gonna probably need more than one session host. And you could certainly write out the code for each one of them by hand or we can use a loop and that tells Bicep to repeat certain sections of the code certain number of times. First, let's jump back to the top and we want to make a new parameter called number of hosts. And then you can see IntelliSense knows right what you need. So just press tab and you can update the number if you know how many you should always build or you could remove that part. And that way you can fill it out whenever you actually do the deployment. But you can modify this parameter to have min and max numbers. That way you keep people from going crazy. Now jump down to the resource where you want to loop. First thing is we need to tell the resource that it needs to be in the loop, which we start by putting square brackets after the equals and after the very last curly bracket of the resource. Then you write this, which means bicep should loop for I, which is the number of times you indicate in the loop from the range of zero through whatever the parameter set. Now that also means that each one of these resources is going to need a unique name. So we need to tell Bicep to increment the dash one at the end here each time it goes through the loop, which looks like this. So it's just the name prefix that we had before with the dollar sign curly bracket I for the plus one. So let's do it again here on the VM square bracket at the top and at the bottom of the resource, and then hit space. And look, IntelliSense is helping you out here too. So just press tab and then just update the name with the dollar I plus one and scroll down. 
Your OS disk name also needs to match the name value. So add your $i plus one here. And don't forget that square bracket at the end. But hold on, Bicep isn't happy. Because you're looping on the NIC, this value doesn't tell the VM which NIC it should be bound with. So you might wanna just add the I here as well, but not so fast. You can't just use the $i plus one because that reference only works inside the same resource. So to reference a different resource, we need to use the square brackets with the I. Scroll down and just update the entry join like we did before. And the parent is gonna need the square bracket I because it references a different resource as well. And then repeat the steps for the DS extension. Now, of course, we could complete this build here in VS Code, but I want you to see what this looks like visually. So right click on the bicep file and generate an ARM template, then open it up, copy all of the code and jump over to the Azure portal. Search at the top for deploy and select deploy custom template. Click here to edit the template, delete all this stuff and paste in your code and then click save. Now scroll down, you can select your subscription and resource group. Then we have your username and password, location and prefix. Then we have the dropdowns for the allowed host operating systems and for the VM size values, which makes it super easy for you as the architect to design something really complex behind the scenes, but make it really simple for all of the admins who have to deploy it. And after you build it, make sure to test and verify everything is there and it's exactly the way you want it. And then you're good to go. Next, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video so you can take your architect skills and become an engineer. Happy learning.